I'm going to do a, uh, a little bit of a run through of some of the switches uh, here. I have found a few things to be confusing, so uh, I thought I would share uh, some information uh, that should help uh, folks get started. Uh, again, this is the Newmar New Air 3343, uh, and uh, let's get started. So. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is uh, we'll, we'll come up on this panel and we'll note a few things. So uh, I, I was playing around with the, uh, I have the WineGuard, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, uh, you know, repeater and cellular uh, router uh, option in here. And I, uh, let's actually show you where that is. So if I back out a little minute, we're going to come left and that router is right up here. Uh, on the left here. So uh, that's this guy uh, and it has two Ethernet ports that are currently plugged in. Um, one of them goes to Silverleaf, the other one uh, goes to the... Um, um, I'm not sure actually where that goes. It might be the roof. I, I, I actually don't uh, know for sure. So uh, there's this unit and then there's this thing on the left here. Um, what's What got me confused, so I was trying to I searched Wi-Fi for this SSID. It was not showing up, uh, and I spent a lot of time <laughs> debugging what was going on. Uh, there is a power switch on this box here, and turning power on and off uh, did not cause this light uh, to come on. It has never come on. So I, I, I don't know if the light is busted or, or what the deal is. The documentation says it, it should be on. So. Uh, I, I played with that. I, I was testing voltages. I was getting concerned that a fuse had blown or something of that nature. Um, turns out <laughs> that there is an actual dedicated button, lo and behold, called Wi-Fi router. So this controls the power to that router. So uh, note to self, turn that on, um, and then you'll have that, uh, that Wi-Fi router going. So. Uh, the other thing that I found um, uh, that, that kind of tripped me up for quite some time. So we've got all of these switches here. We have all of these um, switches down here. Uh, and I am constantly forgetting that there are more switches than that that control some important things. And they are down here in two different locations. So there are some switches here at the passenger chair. So we've got the map light. Um, you can uh, move your shade up and down. Uh, you can put the seat cover uh, in or out. Um, and then uh, you can control the ceiling lights from here. More importantly, and where I'm getting at, is uh, you can do the battery disconnect here. Um, the uh, patio uh, lighting, I'm guessing. I actually haven't played with that yet. Uh, you can lock and unlock uh, the cargo uh, compartments from here. And here's where I got tripped up, the cargo lights. So this was off, and uh, I was opening uh, the, uh, the cargo doors, the basement doors, and of course I was getting no lights down there. Um, I, you know, from, through all the demonstrations, I was noticing that when you opened the doors, in the uh, cargo area, let's take a little trip outside so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. When I was opening the doors during the demo, all these all these uh, LED lighting strips were coming on, providing plenty of light uh, to the inside. So, um, you know, I was like, yeah, I think there's a switch for that, and you know, I'll find that someday. Um, and uh, the other thing to note, uh, there's, a, there's a number of things to note here that I wanted to, to share with you. So even though that switch is on, if I close this door, which will depress this button, um, yeah, demonstration failure, <laughs> this door is open. So if multiple doors are open, this demo doesn't work. So I'm going to close that. I'll come back in here, try the demo again. If I close all the doors, right, I'm pushing that button now, the lights go off, right? So. Opening uh, one door, the lights will come on. So even with that switch on and uh, with the doors closed, you're not sitting here uh, burning battery by having the, the cargo uh, lights on with all the doors closed. So that's uh, one thing I learned. And the second um, more confusing thing 
was this. And I'm gonna use, there's a couple of compartments that have this. So that's the battery compartment, not the one I wanted. Um, cargo, which compartment do I really want? There we go. The, um, the compartment that has uh, the Oasis um, uh, has a light up here. And you'll notice that this light has a switch on it, right? And so you can turn this on and off here. And so what had happened was the cargo light door switch was off. And I came out here, I opened this door, I flipped this switch and the light wasn't working. So I thought I had a problem. So uh, it is important um, to leave these switches turned on. Um, because again, if I close this door, right, I'm, I'm pushing this button when the door, you know, to simulate the door closing, that light goes off. So you don't, you don't need to worry about shutting those lights off. Just make sure the cargo light door on uh, the inside door is on, and that'll take care of that. Okay. And we'll head back in. And we'll see if there's any other switches. Um, I don't think I need to cover any other switches. I haven't been confused by much of anything else here. So um, what I am gonna cover in this panel, however, <clears throat> two things. So we have uh, a wine guard unit uh, in the middle here, and this is for the HD antenna. Uh, it is currently on. If you want to capture over the air and watch that, you need to turn this on. Um, that'll um, do its two things. It'll uh, boost signal for you and it is a uh, directional antenna. So when you arrive at a new location, you're gonna wanna press the search button and it will spend some time um, moving the antenna around uh, on the roof, uh, which you can hear, it's, it's uh, not intrusive at all. It's not particularly, uh, particularly loud. And once that's done, um, you can start watching TV. Uh, don't forget to have to, to set your TV to uh, search for channels again. I've, I've even done things like I typed in channel 4.1 here and it did not tune in. Uh, it only tuned after I did a channel search, which is kind of strange, but anyway. Um, the other thing you can do here is press the sort of left and right rotate buttons and, and that will move the antenna around. So if you're having trouble getting signal for a particular station, uh, you, can, um, you can press that button and it'll move and uh you know and and hopefully strengthen the uh the, the signal for you so i've definitely uh, taken advantage of that that's worked really well uh here at the house second thing to know <clears throat> th uh, this is the gerard awning panel so it definitely took me a while um i actually had to call my um sales rep over during um during the demo um i said i you know somebody was trying to get by and asked me to close the awnings i was looking all over for switches you know because there is a um uh there are two switches here for awnings and uh, well the awning light and then the entry door awning so um uh, I, I was looking for switches like this for the awnings um instead you're going to want to use this unit and this can control <clears throat> one or more uh, at the same time uh, awnings uh, so you can select them i think uh all five yeah you can you might be able to see that all five are currently circled that means that if i um, you know, press a function that it will uh, affect all five of them. So I can control five, five uh, awnings at the same time. Uh, in addition, <clears throat> um, that comes with a remote control. Uh, this is uh, a good idea for uh, stepping outside the unit and then um, bringing uh, your awnings out uh, so that you can uh, watch for uh, any issues, clearance and that sort of thing. The problem that I've run into with this uh, a couple of times now is I have accidentally pressed these buttons. It's very easy to press these buttons if this remote's lying around. Even even just the act of like putting it away or demonstrating it <clears throat> in, a, in, a, uh, in a previous cut of the video that I decided not to publish, I accidentally pressed this button and the on awning started to go out. So um, I, I think personally what I might do is actually take the battery out um, while I am not... Um, uh, using the, the, you know, while I'm not expecting to control the awnings, just, just from a safety perspective. The other thing I could do is more securely store this somewhere. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, you know, Velcro it in here or something like that, just so it's just out of the way. So take note of, of uh, my pain is your gain. <laughs> um, 
And I'll quickly mention, I haven't, even though I haven't used it yet, um, the other box up here, in case you're wondering, um, that's the WineGuard uh, satellite, satellite dish. Um, this is the, um, I forget the model, I'm sorry, but the, I, I do know it is the full-size dish. It's not the one that's in the dome that's a traveler. Um, so uh, I can definitely tell you that when you turn that on and it starts searching for signal, it is loud. You, you absolutely hear it inside, and it takes a long, long time um, to do its thing. Uh, and the other thing that uh, you'll want to know, um, this is based on me playing around with it and, and reading the documentation. You, before you travel, you have to shut that off. And the process of shutting it off is also loud and um, takes quite a bit of time. It has to rotate and store uh, the unit. I, I've seen it take uh, up, you know, upwards of, of a minute or two. So uh, make sure that's part of, of your routine early on. Um, and uh, I think... Um, I, what I'm, I'm just going to talk about the fact that there are two screens here. I will, I will be covering these screens uh, separately like I did Silverleaf. Uh, and I'll be uh, covering, um, you know, the general coach um, a, as well as far as, the driving, uh, as far as driving goes. But I am going to mention one thing um, because it took me um, too long to figure this out. If I can get... Well, I can't get that out of the way for some reason. So, um, if we touch... The screen, both of these came come on, and um, uh, if you if you turn on the, the the coach, if you start it, um, and then and then exit, turn it off, and walk away, these screens will be like this all day long. I don't know why that actually just shut off because uh, that's not that's why. Um, so you'll <clears throat> you'll 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 be walking around, you know, at night when these screens are on. And that's kind of annoying, obviously. So uh, it took me a bit to figure out. You need to come into menu and just hit house mode, All right? And uh, once you've done that, the screens will time out uh, and shut down and go dark. So um, there we go. All right. And uh, that is it for uh, the forward systems. Thanks for watching.